Hey everyone, welcome back to Daily Devotions. Pastor Steve here, and this is actually take two. And I had to come back into my office. My computer ran out of battery at the place that I was. So envision yourself, and I know a lot of you people at St. Paul can, um, but envision yourself sitting in the sanctuary, the actual sanctuary, not the gym, a sanctuary under renovation, but it's just so close. It's so close. About a month away uh, we are uh, to be able to get back into that space, into that sanctuary. Um, the reason why I was there is because of faithfulness, faithfulness for generations after generations for 40 years, it's a couple generations for 40 years. Uh, we have been in that space, uh, receiving the faithfulness of God, uh, faithfully preaching his word, faithfully administering the sacraments, uh, faithfully walking by faith in the body of Christ together. For another 20 years, it was in the sanctuary just across the sidewalk there. And uh, as we talk about being on that campus, uh, being on this campus, we can look generation after generation um, of the faithfulness of God to, yes, us, but the faithfulness that goes far, far back, um, not just when St. Paul Lutheran Church came into existence. Um, it's throughout time. From the beginning of time, he's been faithful to his creation. Uh, from the beginning of time, he's been faithful to humanity, um, to pursuing them uh, with his word, pursuing them with his forgiveness, pursuing them uh, with his faithfulness, justice, as it would say. And what a great word to be able to actually bring forward on a day like today. Uh, today is election day, um, if you're watching it a different day. Um, uh, proud to be American. Yes, got the flag. Thank you, Prayer Shawl uh, Ministry. Uh, but within that, uh, not just proud to be an American, proud to be someone that can be in a land that God has provided for, um, that God has authority over, uh, that God has, frankly, his hands in on and uh, directs and leads us um, as well. And that's our prayer for today, uh, that God and his authority uh, would do what he does. And that is continue to reign, continue to be our king, yet in a land of the free. Moses was about that as well. He wanted to bring about his faithfulness in the word of God. Um, so he wrote a song. He wrote a song and it's Deuteronomy chapter 32. And he wanted to sing that to the whole assembly of Israel. And what he wanted to do in that song, in that uh, kind of preaching, if you call it, kind of his last sermon, Deuteronomy is, it's the fifth book of the Bible. It's the last book of the Pentateuch or, or what the Jewish people call the Torah, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. And so with this last word of Moses, what would you, what would you say uh, within your last word? I know we go all the way to chapter 33, uh, but the understanding is that this last part of Deuteronomy, Moses was going to be brought to death, but what's his last words? What's his last words to the assembly of Israel? It's about the faithfulness of God. It's about the justice of of God. It's about who God is and who he has been for generations in his life, but who he will be for generations to come. He is faithful. Not talking about Moses. Although he was faithful, we always go back to how God is faithful. And so open up to me with me to Deuteronomy chapter 32. As I said to you before, it's this, this song that Moses wants to bring that hopefully rings in the ears of the people of Israel for generations to come. So they can just remember uh, what Moses was all about, always directing them back to the faithfulness of God. Deuteronomy chapter 32, we start at verse 1. It says, Listen, O heavens, and I will speak. Hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. Let my teaching fall like rain, and my words descend like dew like showers on new grass, like abundant rain on tender plants. I will proclaim the name of the Lord, Yahweh. Oh, praise the greatness of our God. He is the rock. His works are perfect, and all his ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong, upright and just is he. Upright and just are he. I'm going to skip down to verse 7 real quick. It says, Remember the days of old. Consider the generations long past. Ask your father and he will tell you. Your elders and they will explain to you. When the Most High gave the nations their inheritance, when he divided all mankind, he set up boundaries for the peoples according to the number of the sons of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people, Jacob, his allotted 
inheritance. In a desert land, he found, he found him. In a barren and howling waste, he shielded him and cared for him. He guarded him as the apple of his eye, like an eagle that stirs up its nest and hovers over its young, that spreads its wings over, uh, springs its wings to catch them and carries them on its pinions. The Lord alone led him. No foreign god was with him. Going back to the ancestors, going back to Jacob and being able to say that's really where Israel came out of, the calling of Israel. And you get to see how God takes care of his people faithfully with justice. On this day, as we really look towards an election, as we look towards a governing authority, as we look towards uh, what our next four years will look like, our next four years will look like this. If God promises us this next day um, and he brings forth that next day, he is a God that will be faithful in it. He is a God that will hold that day in his hands. He's a God that will pursue this day in who he is and who we can see him as. Yes, we look to our governing authorities to bring about some policies and stuff, but we look to our God to bring about justice. We look, we look to our God to bring about faithfulness. And the, re, re, the awesome thing about that is, us who are called as the people of God, we walk and enact justice. We walk and enact kindness and faithfulness to the people around us. And in that, how beautiful it is to be a good citizen, yes, of the United States of America, but a good citizen in the kingdom of God, walking in justice and walking in faithfulness towards God. He is our king. He is our authority. Let us not look to anyone else because for generations after generation, he has been a faithful God. For generations after generation, he continues to pursue you in his word. So thanks for taking a part of that. He continues to pursue you with his sacraments. He continues to pursue you with being able to receive worship. He continues to pursue you to be able to look into your past and being able to say, ah, he didn't move. Maybe I moved, but he never moves. He is the rock, the rock of faithfulness, the rock of justice, and he will always be. And so the spirit of faithfulness, how do we live that out? We live that out with our eyes ever fixed upon an immovable, immovable rock who is our God, who is faithful to us today and in the days to come. You can count on it because his faithfulness is not according to our works or our decisions or our minds or what we want. His faithfulness is according to what he desires and he desires faithfulness to his people and creation. I want to pray today for our nation uh, that we just continue to uh, unite under the understanding of uh, love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and gentleness and faithfulness or goodness and, and faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. That we continue to rally around the fruit of the Spirit that's in us. And you know what? Things will happen in our nation today, whether it be going one candidate or the other. Things are going to be coming uh, unraveling, whether it be people not self-controlled um, and being able to. But, but there's an opportunity as well. You have the opportunity as that citizen, yes, of the United States, but the kingdom of God. You have that, you have that opportunity uh, today to be able to go next to somebody, whether they voted like, like you or didn't, but you can actually love them. You can actually be kind to them and you can absolutely be faithful to God in your day today by just keeping your eyes fixed on him and loving that person next to you in whatever way that may be a conversation, a, a, a generous thought, a, a generous opportunity. We get the opportunity to be the faithful church today because of God's faithfulness to us throughout the generations. Let's pray together. Father, on this day, people would say this is a pivotal day in our world, and it very well can be. But the reality to that, Lord, is this day is in your hands. Each day is such a blessing from you. Each day has so much purpose from you. So let's not make this day any more pivotal than every other day, because our days are, are, are just, we want to be met with one more knee bowing before our, the name of Jesus Christ. So help us to be faithful to that today. Help us to pray for our nation, but help us to be the people of our nation 
with the faithfulness of God inside of us. That we don't look to idols, that we don't look to candidates, that we don't look to a governing authority uh, for our peace, or we don't look to anything else for faithfulness that we should be faithful towards. But rather, let's just look to you, God, to be faithful to you and to be loving and kind and faithful to the people around us. And in that, Lord, help us to unite in that effort, in that kingdom, so that one more knee will bow. In heaven, so that one more repentant sinner will come to know the greatness, the forgiveness, the faithfulness of Jesus through the cross and through the empty grave. Bless us this day so that we can just continue to be faithful to you. Send us your spirit, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a blessed day being faithful, brothers and sisters.